Hi guys, welcome to Sosin IAS Academy. This is Hima Hegde presenting before you the current and contemporary affairs in anthropology. The anthropology of global sexuality. Sexuality has long been an interest of socio-cultural anthropological research. Anthropologists have historically explored ways in which specific cultures manifest their values through sexuality practices. resulting in analysis of categories such as kinship systems hierarchy and social roles in other words anthropologists are interested not only in the concept of sexuality and its many possible categories but also the way in which actually functions in various cultures and the differences across the cultures of these functions heterosexuality the presumed norm of much of sexuality studies until the mid 20th century is studied by anthropologists largely due to its naturalization as a widespread practice in the west heterosexuality is a cross cultural phenomenon and due to its association with the reproduction of human life it has also been connected to the sustainment of human culture However, variations from heterosexuality are also cross-cultural phenomena and anthropology has provided important contributions to this aspect of sexuality. Broadly, anthropology is the study of human societies and cultures. It is comprised of four subfields that is biological or physical anthropology, archaeology, linguistic anthropology, and socio cultural anthropology the anthropology of global sexualities has explored the manner in which gender and sexuality intertwine in varying ways across cultures further these variations trouble the distinctions between sexuality and gender as well as the concept of gender as a binary system Studies of global sexualities and gender diversity conceptualize a number of different ways that sex, sexuality and gender function in relation to one another. This relationship can take the form of discrete yet related categories as closely interwoven qualities and even as qualities that directly inform one another and are occasionally interchangeable or confluent gender is defined here as the experience of characteristics of femininity and masculinity that emerge as social norms and manifest in both socio cultural practices and identities while some theorists prioritize the maintenance of boundaries between gender identity and sexuality this has not always been the case in all cultures and throughout all historical periods further identifying sexuality and gender as identity formations is not a universal practice some cultural conceptions of sexuality and gender see them as a phenomena more precisely defined as a collection of practices or functions additionally the commonly held belief and investment in a gender binary is not a universal belief many cultures have third and fourth gender categories and others understand certain individuals as neither male nor female either as a result of embodying both genders moving between gender embodiments that is gender fluidity or embodying neither that is gender neutrality let us now learn about aging aging can be defined as the time related deterioration of the physiological functions necessary for survival and fertility the characteristics of aging as distinguished from diseases of aging such as cancer or heart disease affect all the individuals of a species Many evolutionary biologists would deny that aging is part of the genetic part of an animal rather they would consider aging to be default state occurring after the animal has fulfilled the requirements of natural selection after its offsprings are born and raised the animals can die 
Indeed, in many organisms, from moths to salmon, this is exactly what happens. As soon as the eggs are fertilized and laid, the adults die. However, recent studies indicate that there are genetic components to senescence and that the genetically determined lifespan characteristics of a species can be modulated by altering the genes or diet. The maximum lifespan is a characteristic of the species. It is the maximum number of years member of that species has been known to survive. The maximum human lifespan is estimated to be 121 years. The lifespans of tortoises and lake trout are both unknown but estimated to be more than 150 years. The maximum lifespan of a domestic dog is about 20 years. However, a person cannot expect to live 121 years and most mice in the world do not celebrate their first birthday. The life expectancy, the amount of time a member of a species can be expected to live is not characteristic of species but of populations. It is usually defined as the age at which half the population still survives. Given that in most times and places, humans did not live much past 40 years, our awareness of human aging is relatively new. The general senescent phenotype is characteristic of each species. But what causes it? This question can be asked in many levels. Now, in order to answer this, there are certain traits or characteristics one being oxidative damage this the one major theory sees our metabol metabolism as the cause of our aging according to this theory aging is a byproduct of normal metabolism no mutations are required above 2 to 3 percentage of the oxygen atoms taken up by the mitochondria are reduced insufficiently to reactive oxygen species that is ROS. And then there is another theory that is the general wear and tear and genetic instability. Wear and tear theories of aging are most are amongst the oldest hypothesis proposed to the account for general senescent type. As one gets older, smaller traumas to the body start building up. Point mutations increase in number and the efficiencies of the enzymes encoded by our genes decrease. Moreover, if a mutation occurred in a part of the protein synthesis apparatus, the cell would make a large percentage of faculty proteins. We then have the mitochondrial genome damage. The mutation rate in mitochondria is 10 to 20 times faster than the nuclear DNA mutation rate. We then have the telomere shortening. Telomeres are the repeated DNA sequences and the ends of chromosomes. And then the genetic aging programs. Several genes have been shown to affect aging. In humans, there are certain syndromes which cause children to age rapidly. So, the, as human life expectancy increases, due to our increased ability to prevent and cure disease, we are still left with a general aging syndrome that is the characteristic of our species. Lastly, we have Verna and caste. Vernas and the caste system are two different concepts that are haphazardly considered synonymous. Verna means color. The term Verna is derived from the word Vri, meaning the choice of one's occupation. Therefore, Varna is considered with one color or combination. On the other hand, caste or jati is derived from the word jana, which means taking birth. Therefore, caste is concerned with the birth. In this article or in this video session, we will discuss about the Varnas and caste system. Now, what is Varna? Varna which is described as caste in the modern era, is a renowned topic in Hinduism. During the Vedic period, when everyone was involved in their duties according to their nature, 
they were supervised by a system of four varnas and four ashrams now the varna system is divided into four groups namely the brahmins kshatriyas vaishyas and the shudras brahmins the brahmins were known as the leading varnas and were given the highest status the kshatriya varna stood at the second position including warriors kings administrators the vaishyas varna the vaishya varna stood at the third position including the farmers herders and traders shudras stood at the last position of this hierarchy including workers laborers and artisans communities that fall under one of the four varnas or classes are regarded as savarna whereas the communities which do not belong to any of the four are called avarnas now what is a caste system caste systems are a form of social and economic administration that relies on principles and customary rules it is divided or it divided the people into social groups which where rights and duties are fixed by birth often includes an occupation and are hereditary in other words caste is where society is divided up into several groups with those who retain more power standing at the top and those who have less or no power standing at the bottom caste is inherited by the people on its own and is not changed now the there are categories in the caste system as well manusmriti is widely regarded as the most significant and reliable book on hindu law brahman who stand at the top of the hierarchy were mainly a teacher the main caste was split into 3000 castes and 25000 subcastes now the evils of the caste system have probed deep into the hearts of society all around they have probed deep all around the indian subcontinent because of the old fashioned misconception first there is discrimination against shudras which is characterized by the corrupting practice of untouchability in now basically what we understand is sometimes although the so, terms varna and caste are interchangeable one thing we need to understand is that there is a great difference between them where caste system is purely based on birth varna is supposed to be based on action the varna system is not a rigid system but the caste system is where in the caste system brahmins will always be respected no matter whether they are educated or not but in the varna system they were regarded because of their knowledge